Today we're going to be making this super versatile shop cart that can be customised in pretty much any way you like. Featuring Velcro totes for your screws and easy storage underneath. We've got paper towel for all our clean up. A slot for our square and various other tools. And somewhere to write quick notes that can be easily wiped off. To get started, we're going to need a few pieces of 1.2 meter or four foot long pieces of pine. And it's good if you can get 1.2 meter because we're gonna be using the off cuts here for another part of the project. So we're gonna be using all of the timber. There wasn't much recording of the sound in this video. I'm changing up my audio and didn't really like it in my editing software. So we're just gonna start by cutting these boards down and we need eight pieces all up and we're just gonna glue them on a bit of a right angle here and put a few brad nails in there to help the glue set. So if you don't have a drop saw with the capability of setting a stop, it's fine to just screw these cross pieces onto the main frame. But we're gonna set a bit of a depth so we've got more of a contact area for the glue to dry and it's a cool little experiment because I haven't got a chance to use this feature on my drop saw yet. And you'll notice that it is actually cutting a curve into the timber. So what we need is a sacrificial piece of timber to go behind it, just so the blade will cut straight through without leaving that curve, which will really mess up our project later on. So this is what i am sort of been talking about here. So we've got a little bit of a groove cut in there. So we've got long grain to long grain contact. So that'll really help with the glue. This isn't going to be a workbench that's gonna take much abuse, but it's always fun to just give it a little bit of a try on the drop saw there. After we've done one side, we pretty much copied it for the second side and we added the bottom pieces there. The bottom pieces to the rear of the shot where my hands are now, that were the off cuts from the 1.2 meter lengths of timber. So we're pretty much using all the timber and not having much waste. So it comes out really cost effective for this project. And it's always the last nail that you put in that you screw up. So we're gonna have to pull that one out with pliers and push on. For the top and bottom pieces, I've just got a bit of MDF that I'm cutting up. I'm just using the circular saw here with some guides that I made. So that worked out really well and I can just slide the bottom piece in there, added some glue and a few screws later on once it's set. So I realized I don't really have much recording of me cutting the steel, but this is for the top piece that we're going to be using. So you'll see that towards the end, then I can get on the bandsaw and cut out some really sketchy looking slots for the paper towel rack to sit, which is going to be sitting on a little piece of dowel. I really wasn't worried too much about where these go, so I just added a few drops of glue, spread it around, then I came back once it was set to put a screw from the back on either side. And this sort of gives you an idea of how it's going to set, and I drilled an oversized hole and just put a screw in there so the dowel doesn't just slide off and cause me some headaches. So we're probably jumping ahead a little bit here because you can see some aluminium on there, but we're just going to give it a quick sand now. Then I put on some wheels. These wheels I found from my supermarket actually. They do random sales of hardware. Most of it's rubbish, but 
if you can pick up a set of wheels for like six bucks, it's always a win. So I try and buy as much of them as I can in the one time. We can add a few licks of oil-based varnish here. This was probably the cheapest stuff I could find at the hardware store. So just something for a little bit of protection is always good. So you'll notice at the start I had some plastic totes and to hold those totes I need this piece of aluminium. So I'm just trying to measure up where I can put it and just drive some screws in here. And then I want to put some Velcro on underneath. So this is one millimeter thick, I believe. So they sit on there really nice. I just mixed up some two-part epoxy. What I should have done is probably gave the bottom of the totes a bit of a sand, just so it gives something to bind to. But I've been using this for a couple of weeks now and it seems to work really well. So it's always good having some sort of storage solution when you're gonna have a mobile cart. So adding these plastic totes with Velcro was a pretty big win for me. And then I can just do a really messy job of spreading it on the top, which is the MDF piece that we cut. And underneath that MDF, we've got the plate of steel. Once everything was dry, I could flip it over, give it a test fit, and it sat in there pretty well. So it was time now to put the plastic totes on and can easily remove them. Slap them underneath for a bit of storage so we can really push this car out of the way when we're not using it and it keeps everything pretty neat and tidy. And finally we can add the paper towel rack, push in the screw and this is pretty much done, quick and simple. So the ultimate shop cart is now complete. This is probably going to be my setup for the most part. I've got all my screws up here dustbin or my safety accessories and I can really utilize this steel top so I'm really happy the way it came out on this side I added an extra strip of wood so I can add a square and some files that can just easily slide down there without sticking out too much which is the most important part so this is really good for metal working it's also good for automotive Really, whatever you're after, it takes up very little space and it worked out quite well. So um, thanks guys for watching. If you want to check out my other video explaining my shop, it'll be in the description and I'll see you next time. Cheers.